Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Cook and we're now in section 8-2, trigonometric ratios. We have two objectives, find the sine, cosine, and tangent of an acute angle, and use trigonometric ratios to find side lengths in right triangles and to solve real-world problems. Our vocabulary includes trigonometric ratio, sine, cosine, and tangent. We're going to get started with a warm-up, so I'm going to ask you to pause the video, work on questions 1 through 4, and then turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. I know you might not have remembered to use long division to convert a fraction to a decimal, but that is the easiest way to do it. And you can see the work, take your time going through it if you need to. For questions number three and four, hopefully you remembered how to solve those equations. And you could have also used proportions. If you had taken the number like 0.8 and put it over one, 0.94, put it over one, and then you used your cross products. Okay, let's move on. Earlier this year, we learned that if two triangles have two pairs of congruent angles, then the triangles are similar by the AA or angle-angle similarity postulate. When we're talking about right triangles, they all share a right angle. They all have one 90 degree angle on them. So if they have one additional pair of congruent angles, then by the AA similarity postulate, they are going to be similar. So we can have similar right triangles if we know just one of the angles is congruent because we already know the right angles are congruent. In this diagram, you have three right triangles, triangle ABC, triangle DEF, and triangle XYZ. All three of these obviously are right triangles, so they have that one 90 degree angle in common. In addition, they all have another angle that measures 32 degrees, so we know all three of these are congruent. And we see the similarity statement given here. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, is similar to triangle XYZ. Similar triangles have congruent angles and proportional side lengths. If you remember, we looked at the ratios to come up with similarity ratios when we learned about similar triangles. Well, on these right triangles that are similar, we're going to call them trigonometric ratios. So those side length ratios are going to have a special name, trigonometric ratios. And for the next few sections, we'll be working with right triangles and their acute angles. Let's take a look at the box on the next page that describes the trigonometric ratios that we'll be working with first. In the box, you can see the trigonometric ratios. Let's do a quick recap on how we name the sides of the triangle. When we have a vertex A of the triangle, if we look to the only side that does not make angle A, that does not help form angle A, that side is what we call the opposite side to angle A. And it is also named A, but this time a lowercase letter. When we look at the vertex B, or angle B, the only side that doesn't help to form angle B is the one that we call the opposite side, and it is also named B, but we use the lowercase b to indicate side B. When we're talking about, the, in this case, the right angle of this triangle, which is vertex C or angle C, the only side that does not touch or does not help form angle C, our right angle in this case, is side C. Again, a lowercase symbol for the side length, an uppercase letter for the angle name. So if we're talking strictly about angle A, then side A is going to be the one that we call the opposite. The hypotenuse, or side C, is always going to be called the hypotenuse. But now we have another name that we haven't really talked about before, and it is, I want you to think about this, so um, angle A is made up of two segments. One of them is the hypotenuse, which in this triangle we call C. The other one is side B, and this one, because it touches angle A and it's not the hypotenuse, we call it the adjacent side. Adjacent means next to. So angle A is formed by the hypotenuse and the adjacent side, side B. And it has side A opposite to angle A. If we're looking at angle B, the orientation is going to be different between the adjacent and the opposite, but the hypotenuse is still going to be in the same place. 
So if we're looking at angle B, then the side opposite to angle B is side B. The hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse, and the side adjacent to angle B is going to be side A. So whether a side is an adjacent or an opposite depends on which angle you're looking at. Let's take a look in the box, and we're going to talk about these trigonometric ratios. The one called sine, S-I-N-E, of an angle is the ratio of the length of the leg opposite the angle to the length of the hypotenuse. So if we're looking at the sine of angle A, then it's going to be side A, which is the opposite, over the hypotenuse side C. If we're interested in the sine of angle B, then it's going to be the opposite, which is side B, over the hypotenuse, which is still C. Okay, so that's the sine. There's another trigonometric ratio, which is called the cosine. And the cosine is when we take the side length that is adjacent to the angle, and we put that over the hypotenuse. So again, if we're interested in angle A, the cosine of angle A is going to be the adjacent side, which is side B, over the hypotenuse, which is side C. If we're interested in the cosine of angle B, then it's going to be the adjacent leg, which is side A, over the hypotenuse, which is side C. Tangent is going to not worry about the hypotenuse, but it's going to be the opposite over the adjacent. Opposite over adjacent for angle A would be side A over side B. For angle B, it would be side B over side A. You can see that those are reciprocals of one another. Now, this can be hard to remember at the beginning when we're first learning this, so we use this mnemonic called SOKOTOA. SOKOTOA stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and TOA is tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. Again, I know that this is a lot for right now, but it'll sink in little by little and you will be fine. You'll get this, no problem, but it is a lot to kind of think about at the very beginning. So sine, cosine, and tangent are the three trigonometric ratios we're going to be worrying about right now, and we're going to be using this new information to take a look at example number one. In example number one, we want to write each trigonometric ratio as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. Question A is sine of angle J. So we're interested in angle J, which is that angle that I'm shading in right now. And the sine of angle J, remember that sine stands for the so part of SOKOTOA. And that means sine is going to be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the side length, which is opposite to side J, is 60. The length of the hypotenuse is 61. So the sine of angle J is 60 divided by 61. And if we put that in our calculator and we round to the nearest hundredth, which is what the instructions tell us to do, we're going to get about 0.98. Now let's take a look at the cosine of angle J. As we're getting used to these trigonometric ratios, it's definitely worth it for us to label our triangles depending on which of the angles is of interest at any given time. So I've relabeled my triangle with opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, all in reference to angle J. When it comes to the cosine of angle J, remember this is the ka part, so ka toa. Cosine stands for adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side to angle J measures 11. We don't know what the units are, but 11. And the hypotenuse measures 61. Still the same old hypotenuse. When we put that on our calculators, we get about 0.18. The last question, question C, asks us for the tangent of angle J. This is the TOA part right here. So the tangent stands for opposite over adjacent. And the side 
opposite to angle J measures 60. The side that's adjacent to angle J measures 11. So we end up, again, when we put it into our calculator, with about 5.45. All three of these ratios, the sine, cosine, and tangent, remember SOHCAHTOA, were all with reference to angle J. On the next page, we're going to take a look at example one again, but this time we're going to be taking a look at the triangle with regards to angle K. Example one continued, and we are, again, we have the same box in case we need it to refer to. We're going to be taking a look at the trigonometric ratios, this time with regards to angle K. Angle K is our angle of interest. We know that the one opposite to angle K is the one that doesn't help form angle K. And the hypotenuse is always directly across from the 90 degree angle. And the other side that helps to form angle K is what we call the adjacent. So now that we've got our triangle labeled, it's going to be really easy for us to put together the trigonometric ratios associated with angle K. Sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, is going to be 11 over 60, or approximately 0.18. The cosine of angle K is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is going to be 60 over 61, which is approximately 0.98. Remember, again, we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. The tangent of angle K is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, so 11 over 60, which is about 0.18. Did you see any connections between the trigonometric ratios for angle J and the trigonometric ratios for angle K? Hopefully you did see a connection. All right. On the next page, you've got a now you try to get some more practice with the trigonometric ratios. Up at the top, we've got our mnemonic, SOHCAHTOA, to kind of guide you as you're looking at the triangle. You're going to first be orienting towards ang from angle R, and then you're going to be looking at angle S. So turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. Check your answers to A, B, and C, and then you can pause the video and work on D, E, and F, and then turn the video back on to check those answers. If you have trouble with any of these, go back and take a look at SOHCAHTOA, look at the examples that we started out with, and see if that helps you. In example two, we're going to be taking a look at the trigonometric ratios of special right triangles. Remember those? We had two different kinds of special right triangles. One was a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, and the other one was a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we're going to take a look at both of those in turn and write out the trigonometric ratios for the sine, cosine, and tangent for both of those triangles. A great place to start is by labeling the triangle. We'll start with the right angle. We know the smallest angle is going to be the 30 degree angle and the medium size angle is going to be the 60 degree angle. Another thing that we should remember from the chapter where we learned about special right triangles is the side opposite the smallest angle is going to be the shortest length and we'll call that one x. Our hypotenuse is 2x long and our long leg is x times the square root of 3. So if we're looking at the angle that measures 30 degrees, which we are in questions 1, 2, and 3, the angle that measures 30 degrees is this one over here on the right. And we know that the angle, I'm sorry, that the side opposite that angle is going to be called the opposite. The hypotenuse is always the one directly across from the 90 degree angle, and the third side that we haven't mentioned yet is going to be the one that we call the adjacent side to the 30 degree angle. Remember our mnemonic, SOHCAHTOA, as a reminder of the ratios and we're going to take a look at the sine of 30 degrees. Sine is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side, or the side opposite the 30 degree, 
has length x, and the hypotenuse has length 2x. And we know that x divided by x is 1, so when we simplify this fraction x over 2x, we end up with 1 half. So that means that the sine of 30 degrees on this special right triangle is 1 half. Cosine of 30 degrees is, cosine is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse. And the adjacent measures x times the square root of 3, hypotenuse measures 2x. Once again, x is cancel, and we're going to end up with square root of 3 over 2. So the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. Now just a reminder, because these triangles always measure 30, 60, 90, a, a 30, 60, 90 triangle may be a tiny one, may be a big one, because we know we can have dilations, but the cosine of every 30 degree angle on a 30, 60, 90 triangle is always going to measure the same ratio, square root of 3 over 2. Tangent is defined as opposite over adjacent. On our 30, 60, 90 triangle, the, when we're referencing the 30 degree angle, the opposite measures x, the adjacent measures x times the square root of 3. This is going to simplify to 1 over the square root of 3. And you may remember, we're not allowed to leave any radicals in the denominator, so we're going to need to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by square root 3 over square root 3, and we end up with square root 3 over 3. So the tangent of 30 degree angle is the square root 3 over 3. Just a reminder, SOHCAHTOA only for right triangles. Okay, now I'd like you to use questions 4, 5, and 6 as a now you try. And you're going to start by labeling the triangles. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. If you labeled your triangle and remembered SOHCAHTOA, I'm betting you didn't have any trouble with questions 4, 5, and 6. If you did, definitely ask questions in class or go back and take a look at the examples and take your time going through this. All right, let's look at the last three questions that are about the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Once again, let's start by labeling our triangle. We've got the angles, the names of the sides, and the side lengths all labeled. So now we're ready to compute the ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's start with sine of 45 degrees. Obviously, since the 45, 45, 90 triangle is isosceles, it doesn't matter which 45 degree angle we use because everything is going to be identical. So we'll start with the sine of 45 degrees. And remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite is length x, and the hypotenuse is length x over root 2. x is cancel, that leaves us with 1 over root 2. We have to rationalize that because we're not allowed to have to express numbers keeping the radical in the denominator. So when we rationalize it, we end up with root 2 over 2. So the sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is defined as the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent measures x and the hypotenuse measures x over root, oh, I'm sorry, x times root 2. We simplify this to 1 over root 2, and I know this looks familiar. We rationalize by multiplying by root 2 over root 2, which is actually equal to 1, and we end up with root 2 over 2. So the cosine of 45 degrees is also equal to root 2 over 2. Last of all, we're going to get the tangent of 45 degrees. Tangent is defined as opposite over adjacent. The opposite side to the 45 degree measures x. The adjacent side measures x. So that means the tangent of 45 degrees, when we simplify x over x, we get 1. So tangent of 45 degrees is equal to 1. On the next page, we're going to do some calculator work. 
So go ahead and grab your calculator so you can work on the problems in example three. Example number three says, use your calculator to find each trigonometric ratio round to the nearest hundredth. For these questions, you must have a scientific calculator. And you'll notice on your scientific calculator that you will have keys that say SIN for sine, COS for cosine, and TAN for tangent. Depending on the calculator, sometimes you have to put the angle measurement in first, and sometimes you can't tap the sine key or cosine or tangent key first. So try it out both ways on your calculator. We're going to start out with a sine of 52 degrees. Another thing that you also need to check for is that you're in degree mode instead of radian mode. There are different ways to measure angles, and for all of this year, we're really only going to be using degrees. So when you are calculating the sine of 52 degrees in your calculator, you should get rounded to the nearest hundredth, 0.79. When you do the cosine of 19 degrees, you should get rounded to the nearest hundredth, 0.95. And when you try to find the tangent of 65 degrees, you should get 2.14 rounded to the nearest hundredth. If you're having any trouble with your calculator, bring it to class and I'll help you. Let's take a look at example number four now. In example number four, we want to use trigonometric ratios to help us find lengths of the triangle. Just a reminder that we're going to be using SOHCAHTOA and what it stands for. Sine is defined as opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and TOA is tangent is opposite over adjacent. So let's label our triangle. We want to find the length of BC. We know we have a right triangle. We know we have a 15 degree angle. So we could definitely find the measure of angle A if we wanted to. But let's go ahead and use angle B. So if we're starting out at angle B, then the opposite side is side AC. And the adjacent side is side BC. And of course, the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. So when we look at the diagram, we see that the information that was given to us in the question was the length of the opposite side. The one that we're trying to find is the adjacent side. And which of the trigonometric ratios relates opposite and adjacent? That's right, it's the tangent. So we're going to be using the tangent to help us find the length of BC. The tangent of angle B is defined as the opposite over the adjacent. When we plug the numbers in, the value that we're looking for is the adjacent, or BC, otherwise known as BC. And what we want to do is multiply both sides by the adjacent to get it out of the denominator. So. We're going to multiply adjacent times the tangent of 15 degrees is equal to 10.2. Now, I know that this is weird and this is new, but don't worry, you're going to get the hang of it. After we see that we have the adjacent, our unknown, times the tangent of 15 degrees, which we know is just a side length ratio, let's remember that, what we're going to do is divide both sides by the tangent of 15 degrees. And that means the tangent of 15 degrees is going to cancel out on that left hand side and we're going to be left with just the adjacent is equal to 10.2 divided by tangent of 15 degrees. Now the rest of it is calculator work and so we're going to plug that into our calculator and we're going to find that the adjacent is approximately 38.07 because we were rounding to the nearest hundredth and our units was feet so so the length of BC is 38.07 feet there are two more questions on this page that we are going to use as a now you try so pause the video, work on these questions, and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers.
I know you can do this. Good luck. Looking at these side length ratios, the right angle trigonometry, what we call SOHCAHTOA, I know that this is new for you and it might be a little bit uncomfortable, but you will get used to this. Don't worry, practice is how we learn. So go ahead and practice these a couple of different times and you should be fine. We have some real world applications on the next page using our information about SOHCAHTOA. On example five, we have a real world application. You can see that this is a ramp. This is a wheelchair ramp. Let's go ahead and read the question together. A contractor is building a wheelchair ramp for a doorway that is 1.2 feet above the ground. To meet the Americans with Disabilities Act guidelines, the ramp will make an angle of 4.8 degrees with the ground. Question A reads, to the nearest hundredth of a foot, what is the horizontal distance covered by the ramp? That means that what we want to find is this horizontal distance. And that is the adjacent side to angle C. And we're going to use angle C because it was the one that was given to us. We're trying to find the adjacent, and the information that was given to us in the question was the opposite. So the trigonometric ratio that relates the opposite to the adjacent is the tangent. The angle whose measure we have is angle C. So we're going to use the ta tangent of angle C, which is defined as the opposite over the adjacent. And tangent of 4.8 degrees is equal to 1.2 over side length BC. We know to solve for BC, we're going to multiply both sides by BC and then divide both sides by the tangent of 4.8 degrees. And now it's just calculator work. So we find, by putting this into our calculator, that side length BC rounded to the nearest hundredth of a foot is 14.29 feet. Question B says, to the nearest hundredth of a foot, what is the length of the ramp AC? Now we have choices. We can either use the Pythagorean theorem or we can use our trigonometric ratios. So if we use the Pythagorean theorem, we will set it up as hypotenuse squared is equal to leg one squared plus leg two squared. The hypotenuse is side AC, and one of the legs measures 14.29, the other leg measures 1.2. So again, now we're in calculator work, and we're going to say AC is actually the square root of the sum of those two numbers. Calculator does the rest of the work, and we end up with AC is 14.34 feet is our units rounded to the nearest hundredth. And remember, we could have done this with the Pythagorean theorem. We might have ended up with slightly different numbers just because of rounding. I know that this was a super long section, but we got through it all, and now you're ready to do homework. Remember, any questions, please bring them to class, and we'll get them all addressed during class. Good luck on the homework, and I'll see you back at school.